What's up nerds, I'm the Renegade Cactus, but you can call me whatever you want. That was a weird voice crack, but we're gonna jump straight into... <sighs> opening a Magic the Gathering. Uh... Ah, Commander Legends. Now, this is, as I probably wrote in the title, I don't know, this is once again a sponsored video. Why is there no hashtag sponsored thing over anywhere in the uh, on the screen or in the description? Because it's technically not that kind of a sponsored thing. It's the Hook Boys again. <laughs> it's the WhatsApp group of me and five of my best friends. And one of them, Mika, the amazing Mika, who is also the one responsible for my channel um, avatar for the cactus on black background, the white cactus on black background. He <laughs> he said to me he never thought he would it would be so fun for him to just watch someone open cards, but he actually really enjoys my videos, which is great, and I lo love to hear that. And so he sponsored this box, like a whole box. I, I, I told him he doesn't have to, he didn't have to, but he wanted to do it, so I am absolutely eternally grateful. Uh, we're gonna just open this thing up. I put my knife somewhere. I... I have no idea where I put my knife, so we're gonna have to try and open this a different way. You know what? Let's use this pen. <laughs> Worked like a charm. By the way, um, as always, I have Dawn Glare open to check the prices of the cards, just in case. You know, just in case. Um, and there's one thing with Commander Legends, there are quite a few pretty big hits, like we're talking, I mean, the, the biggest one, the Jeweled Lotus, with the extended art, $111, according to this site. Mana Drain extended art, $80, 76 for Jeweled Lotus, 72 for the Vampiric Tutor, 60 for Mana Drain. So, quite a lot of big hits. But the thing is, the most expensive one, according to Dawn Glare, is, what's it called? Caddis Emberclaw Familia. The thing is, that is some kind of error on the sites, on the site, because that thing is an uncommon and it's probably like at, at most a dollar, if, if you're lucky too. <laughs> but for some reason, it's on this site. It says that the card is worth 150 bucks, which is completely untrue. But whatever, <laughs> it's it's a fun little bug, and doesn't hurt anyone. I think. I hope. So, the thing about Commander Legends, as you can see, it's a 20 card draft booster. So the draft boosters, there is the recently with, I think, Ikoria, maybe before that, they started bringing out draft booster and collector's booster. Collector's booster boosters are the ones that are way more expensive because there are guaranteed at least, I think, two or three rares and alternative art cards and most of them are foil it's just a whole bunch of pretty pretty cards that are pretty expensive all in all and the draft boosters are the regular boosters but with commander legends we got 20 card draft boosters not just 15 as regular and each of them has if i remember correctly at least um a yeah at least two rare two rare cards they could be rare mythical and also a foil slot, which could also be rare. So if you're lucky, you can have three rares, if I remember correctly. In this box, there are not 36 booster packs. There are, we got three, six, eight times three is 24. We got 24 booster packs, each with more cards in it. So I think I, I didn't do the math. I don't want to do the math right now. <laughs> technically easy, I just don't want to do it right now. I think we have the same amount of cards, just in less boosters. I'm not gonna say that I'll do this in one video, I'm not gonna say I'm gonna do it in two videos, at most. I'm just gonna see how how things are going. I'm gonna decide on the fly. We're gonna jump in and open the first one. Ooh, that's, that's, an, ooh, that's an easy open. Ooh, I like that. Perfectly preserved booster pack. I like that. I, I will probably keep that. Okay, we got a soldier token. There is no card trick like in Pokemon. We just turn it around and take a look at the cards. 
All right, that seems to be pretty good in focus. We got the Finclade Fugitives. I'm not gonna read every card because some of them I already know. I'm just gonna go through them just not that fast. Exquisite Huntmaster, Armory of Iroas, whenever a quick creature attacks, put a 1-1 counter on it. Damn! That's great in my vampire deck. Because I got some vampires that get uh, plus one plus one each time they deal combat damage or each time they attack or they have to attack each turn so that would actually be very good. Cage of Hands that kind of looks like it could be from Kamigawa. Interesting. Can't attack or block. So basically pacifism just that you can return it to its owner's hand. Interesting. Scrap Diver Serpent can't be blocked as long as the defending player controls an artifact. Nice. Valakut Invoker. Ooh, Invoker. We haven't had those in quite a while, I think. I don't know if there is one for every uh, for every color, but in Scorch, there were five Invoker. Oh no, no, five Gem Hand, Gem Hand creature. And one of them was the Gem Hand Invoker. It was the red one, I think. They were three mana, I think, all of them, if I remember correctly, and all of them had an eight activatable. Uh, activatable ability. Invoker deals 8 damage to any target, which is incredibly expensive for 8, but it's just something that you can do, that's it. <laughs> Lumigrid Gargoyle, Court Street, Court Street Denizen, God, the art is as, always so great. Perilous Mirror, or Mir, I don't know how you pronounce that, but they've been around for ages. Gale Strike, Champion of the Flame, beautiful. Angel of the Darn, beautiful. I love angels in Magic the Gathering. Like, looking at them. And technically they're abilities, but some of, I just, sometimes I hate angels. <laughs> if I have to fight against them, I hate them. Sentinel Spider, hate spiders in real life, love them in Magic the Gathering. Golem Artisan. Monstrous Onslaught. Monstrous Onslaught deals X damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control as you cast the spell. Nice. Humble Defector. Draw two cards, target opponent gains control of Humble Defector. Activate this ability only during your turn. That is interesting. That is an interesting... I wouldn't call it high risk, high reward, but it's just... I mean, you can draw two cards and then you lose a 2-1. That can make your opponent draw cards, but then you gain control of it. Hmm, interesting. And we got Court of Bounty. When Court of Bounty enters the battlefield, you become the Monarch. <clears throat> At the beginning of your upkeep, you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. If you're the Monarch, instead you may put a creature or land card from your hand onto the battlefield. Damn! Just put a creature card every turn, as long as you're the Monarch. Which there are now a few cards that can make you or someone else the Monarch. That is interesting. Ezio Wardwing Familia, which is an uncommon again. They, it's it's pretty strange how they did that. Ooh, and we got Kamal Heart of Croza, eight mana, five five, legendary creature, human druid. At the beginning of combat on your turn, creatures you control get plus three plus three and gain trample until end of turn. The beginning of combat on your turn. He doesn't have to attack. He just gives everyone plus three plus three and trample. Holy shit! I mean, he, it's incredibly expensive, but if you can just put it on the battlefield without paying anything, holy! Two mana. Until end of turn, target land you control becomes a 1-1 one, one elemental creature with vigilance, indestructible and haste. It's still a land. Which means it also, also gains plus three plus three. Partner, you can have two commanders if both have partner. I have Gotta tell you, I have no idea how the commander system works. I gotta read up on that. But damn, that is... Holy shit. As far as I can see, it's, it's not a big hit. Although, in my opinion, it should be. Nope, I, I really don't see it. The Court of Bounty is a six bucks hit, which, like, nothing too crazy. And this guy, I don't even see him anywhere. So either he is just a... Really small hit or just, I don't know, not on here. No idea. Doesn't really matter. 
we're not in it for the money. Making a little bit of money, sure, why not? But we're not in it for the money. The wait, let me do this. Okay. Okay, I'm done. We got the Scholar of Stars that I still have in my hand. It's an common, it's a common. Four mana, three, two, when a scholar of when a scholar of stars enters the battlefield, if you control an artifact, draw a card. That to me seems a little expensive. Like it's card draw, so that's good. But it's card draw that requires you to have a an artifact. That's I don't know, that, that seems for four mana, three two seems a bit much, but I'm not a pro, I just it's just my personal opinion. Okay, rares over here and the rest over there. I don't know. I just I wanna have a little bit more organization in here right now this time. Next up, the second pack. Yeah, it's first one took a while, but I think, like I said, I'm I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go through <clears throat> and we're gonna see what we'll actually get and how far we'll actually get. Okay, we well we got a rock. Nice. <laughs> And our foil, which I spoiled already, is the Lumengrid Gargoyle, which is a common. Nothing too special, but still, it's cool. I love foils. Defiant Salvager. Armory of Iros. Squad Captain. Deranged Assistant. Undying Rage. That is the... Uh, what was it? Time Spiral? I think the the set was Time Spiral that had this as a as the main like the main artwork like this and also or Time Shift something with time and also I got a a novel a Magic the Gathering novel that has this exact picture on it can't remember who she, who she is Gift of Paradise Enchant Land when Gift of Paradise enters the battlefield you gain three life nice. Chanted Land has at two mana of any one color. Nice. Love it. Murder. Destroy target creature. That's an old school card. Like, I think it's... I have 8th eight, eight edition or something like that from the, this. Just, it's an old school card. Ooh. Path of Ancestry. Enters the battlefield tapped. Add one mana of any color in your commander's color identity. When that mana is spent to cast a creature spell that shares a creature type with your commander, scry one. That's convoluted, but great. That's actually pretty good. Like, if you have a knight deck and a knight commander, that's pretty good. Azure Fleet Admiral. Hand of the battlefield, you become the monarch. Can't be blocked by creatures the monarch controls. Hmm. So you become the monarch? So the second part doesn't concern you unless you are no longer the monarch. Then we get Gargoyle. Like, there can only be one Monarch, so even if you have multiple cards, or you have a card that makes you the Monarch, and your enemy has an, a card that makes him the Monarch, the one who played it later is now the Monarch. There is only one, always. <coughs> Water. <laughs> Annoyed Altisaur. 7 mana, 6-5, Reach Trample, Cascade. When you cast a spell, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-land card that costs less. You may cast it without paying its mana cost. Post the exile card on the bottom of your library in a random order. Interesting. That doesn't really make sense to me to exile them when you put them on the bottom of your library. Like there are cards that just say draw cards and put the rest on top or on the bottom of your library. So why exile them? I have no idea. Doesn't matter. Maybe there are some cards like if cards get exiled, I don't know. Aeona's Judgment, 5 mana, exile target creature or enchantment, always great. Prophetic Prism, and as the battlefield draw a card, add 1 mana of any color. Nice. I mean, it costs 1 to add, to add 1 mana, so basically you don't gain any mana, but you can choose what color you get, meaning if you only have red left and you need a green mana, you can get it by like using a red one. That's pretty great. Revenant, which looks amazing. Flying, Revenant's power and toughness are each equal to the number of creature cards in your graveyard. And Hans says, not again. <laughs> I like it. Guildless Commons, and the spell tapped, and the battlefield return a land you control to its owner's hand and add two. That's not bad. 
Lord Seeker Stone, draw three cards. This ability costs one more to activate for each card in your hand. Okay, okay, that's 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 fair because three mana for three cards is ridiculous. Blasphemous Act. <laughs> Nine mana. This costs one less for each creature to cast for each creature on the battlefield. Deals 13 damage to each creature. Holy shit. That's evil. Not good, just evil. Armix, Filigree Thrasher, whatever that means. Whenever Armix, Filigree Thrasher attacks, you may discard a card. When you do, target creature defending player controls gets minus X, minus X until end of turn, where X is the number of artifacts you control, plus the number of artifacts in your graveyard. Damn. That's not bad, because like basically all the artifacts that you have. And we got... Caleth Sunmane Familiar. There was only one rare, so there is, there seems to be just a possibility of gain, uh, getting more than one rare. That's good to know. That's good to know. But we got five, yeah, five uncommon, and the foil, of course. Okay, so I was mistaken. Like I said, I I, I said that it's that you get at least two rare. That was mistaken. That was my mistake. Seems there is a chance of getting two or maybe up to three rares. But, I mean, even one rare is always... Rares are always great, right? You, you, you don't... We don't mind getting rares. Even if they are not the most valuable or good. It's just you get rares. That's... That's nice. <laughs> I enjoy that. Do you enjoy that? I hope you enjoy that. Okay, all of them are so easy to open. I kind of love it. I probably really don't... Uh, I probably won't uh, keep them all around. But one or two maybe because they are just... They look good. Spark Harvest. Harvest. As an additional. Ugh. Again, as an additional cost to cast a spell, sacrifice a creature or pay four mana. So either sacrifice a creature and pay one, or don't sacrifice anything but pay five. Destroy a target creature or planeswalker. That's nice. Put that in a token deck, like a 1 1 creature token. Get rid of it. Destroy a creature or planeswalker. That's awesome. Benevolent Blessing, Flash, Enchant Creature, enter the battlefield, choose a color. Enchanted Creature has protection from the chosen color. Doesn't remove aura or equipment you control that are already attached to it. That's awesome. Especially since it has Flash. Aqueous Form, Enchant Creature, can't be blocked. Whenever Enchanted Creature attacks, cry one. Nice. Crushing Vines, classic as well. I'm guessing like SC. 11 or SX11? I don't know what uh, if that's a, a Z or a an X, but it says 11 next to it, I think. If so, that could be that it's it's been drawn in uh, 2011. I don't know, but I know this uh, the 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 art. It's pretty old. Goblin Trailblazer menace can't be blocked except by two or more creatures. Always great. Bitter Re Revelation. Look at the top four cards of your library. Put two of them into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. You lose two life. That can be really good. Also, is that Zorin Markov? Yeah, it's Zorin Markov. <laughs> like that guy. Hate that guy? I don't know. Fire Diamond. Enters the battlefield tap. Add a red mana. That's nice. Kite Sail Skirmisher. Kids Bale Courier. Uh, Courier? 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 Courier, I think. I think. <laughs> Stone Fury deals damage to target creature equal to the number of lands you control. Sure, a classic, kinda. Pirate's Cutlass, attention to target pirate you control, equipped creature gets plus two plus one. Not bad. Not great, not bad. <laughs> Entourage of Trust and Entourage of Trust. Open the armory, search your library for an aura or equipment card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. Not bad. Fencing Ace. Double strike, hate that guy. Saw him pretty often in in uh, Magic Online, Magic Arena, that's what it's called. Feast of Succession, damn, that's... God, that's such an amazing art. All creatures get minus four, minus four until end of turn, you become the monarch. Holy shit. That can be a board wipe, depending on who you're playing against. And we got Fer Phyrexian Triniform. When Phyrexian Triniform dies, create three 3-3 three, three colorless golem artifact creature tokens. Costs 9 mana, 9-9, nine, nine, and you get 3-3-3. Three, three, three. 
Encore 12. Exile this card from your graveyard. For each opponent, create a token copy that attacks that opponent this turn if able. They gain haste. Sacrifice them at the beginning of the next end step. That means it's, it is create a token copy. It's a copy of this one. So it also has the ability. That's awesome. I mean, it costs incredible amounts of mana. But that's pretty awesome. And we got Liesa or Liesa, Liesa, let's call it Liesa, Shroud of Dusk. That, oh, she looks beautiful. I love angels in this game. Six, five, no, five mana. Five, five. Rather than pay two for each previous time you've cast a spell from the command zone this game, pay two life that many times. Okay. Flying lifelink. Whenever a player casts a spell, they lose two life. Whoa. So, these two, I think, you just pay two life for however many times you've already played Liesa. That, okay, I, yeah, sure. <laughs> that, that makes sense, guess. I guess that makes sense. Tuya Bear Claw. Whenever Tuya Bear Claw attacks, it gets plus X plus X until the turn where X is the greatest power among other creatures you control. Nice. And we got, ooh, the Sentinel Spider foil, and we got the Prismatic Piper. If the Prismatic Piper is your commander, choose a color before the game begins. The Prismatic Piper is the chosen color. Partner, you can have up to two commanders. Sure. That, once again, no idea how commander actually works. So, I'm very sorry. I cannot really say anything about how good, bad, or whatever this is. Really don't know. I should should I have read about it beforehand? Sure. Did I do it? Absolutely not. Will I do it right now? Nope. <laughs> it's just I, I'm opening this box and I don't know if I, that will probably be all I do about or for Commander Legends. So I'm fine with it. Damn, this will probably be two episodes because we're only at the fourth of twenty four. <laughs> We got treasure. We're gonna do it a bit faster, but still, it's yeah. We'll see. When Malfield twin dies, twins dies, creates two play two two black creature zombies. I completely screwed that up. You, you, this, this, that's it. Core cartographer, kite sail corsair, Malakut invoker, Fergalit. And it's the battlefield with two 1-1 one, one counters on it. Remove a 1-1 one, one counter from Freddy Lit, target player searches their library for a basic land card, puts it onto the battlefield, then shuffles their library. Not bad. Absolutely not bad. Champion of the Flame. Flashback Marauder. And it's the battlefield. Each player sacrifices a creature. Interesting. Scab Goliath. As an additional cost to, cost to cast this spell, exile two creature cards from your graveyard. Trample. 6-9. Nice. <laughs> or 6 mana. Meh. Perilous Myrrh, Farhaven Elf, Slith Ascendant, Terramorphic Expanse, Prying Eyes, Furnace Celebration, Mask of Memory. Whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, you may draw two cards. If you do, discard a card. Mm, so that's pretty okay. Horizon Scholar, Sphinx, they are never good. <laughs> Flying 4-4 for, for, for 6 mana, Scry 2 if it enters the battle. That's... Bad. That's bad. Flamekin Herald. Commander spells you cast have cascade. Okay. Blim, comedic genius. Whenever flying, whenever Blim, comedic genius deals combat damage to a player, that player gains control of target permanent you control. Then each player loses life and discard cards equal to the number of permanents they control but don't own. Why? <laughs> That's so stupid. Kind of fun. Siani, Eye of the Storm. Flying when Siani, Eye of the Storm attacks, cry X or X is the number of attacking creatures with flying. That's awesome. Ooh, and we got a third rare, which is uh, a foil. It's Dawnglade Regent. When Dawnglade Regent enters the battlefield, you become the Monarch. As long as you are the Monarch, permanence you control have hexproof. Holy shit! That's nice. That's nice. So, 
Three rares in one pack. That's awesome. So far we haven't pulled anything like too special that's anything that's that's on the big list of money money. But we got quite a lot like okay, we opened four packs and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rares. So all in all we pull two rares each pack, technically. That's pretty amazing, not gonna lie. All right, let's keep going. I'm, I'm gonna keep going like I'm doing right now where I just read the cards that look interesting to me. And we got a Thrall. Still don't know what they actually look like because my, my brain cannot comprehend what I'm actually looking at. And of course I'm reading the rares unless we already got them. Have I read all of them? Pretty sure, yeah. Doomed, yeah, sure I did. Doomed Traveler, love this art. When Doom Traveler dies, create a 1-1 one, one white creature token with flying. So for one mana, you get a 1-1 one, one, and after that a 1-1 one, one with flying. That's... That's amazing. <laughs> then operative. Foundry Inspector. Cast artifact, artifact spells you cast cost one less to cast. That's great. Hacker's Form. Skyraker Giant. Reach. Soul Smite. That's such a strange looking card. Like, it's, it's very well made. It's just still just so strange looking. Phyrexian Rager looks like Urgot from League of Legends, not gonna lie. When Phyrexian Rager enters the battlefield, you draw a card and you lose one life. That's alright. Rupture Spire. Spark Tongue Dragon. Ooh, dragons. 5 mana 3 3. When Spark Tongue Dragon enters the battlefield, you may pay 3. When you do, it deals 3 damage to any target. Eh. <laughs> That's really not great. Fall from Favor. Sky Whalers shot. I love the idea of Sky Whales. That's just... Ah, freaking love the idea of how that would look. Molder Beast. Charcoal Diamond. Return to Dust. Imperi Imperious Perfect. Other elves you control get 1-1 one, one and create a 1-1 one, one elf warrior creature token. Damn it. Hate it. Hate it already. <laughs> I, I, I just hate Elf decks, like they are amazing. That's why I hate them. Kind of, I don't know. G Grafted War Gear. That ah, uh, what was that set again? Which all those Vol Shocks and stuff. Can't remember. We got the Blade Griff Prototype. Flying when Blade Griff Prototype deals combat damage to a player, destroy a target non land permanent of that player's choice that one of your opponent controls. That's all right. It's just. 5 mana, 3-2, eh, it, it's alright. We got Togo, Goblin Weaponsmith. We got Helena or Halana, Cassic Ranger, and we got Corpse Churn. Mill 3 cards, then you may return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand. That's not bad. Mill 3 cards, so you mill 3 cards, right? Yeah, otherwise it would say target opponent or target player. So you mill 3 cards, that's... That's all right. Like if if you got some cards that you really want to get back, sure. If you like among those three cards, there could be some interesting creature cards that you can get back. So it's all in all not a bad card. And since black can be very self-destructive due to reasons or with reasons, let's say it like that, that's a pretty decent card in my opinion. Defiant Salvager, Howling Golem. That looks amazing. Trusty Pack Beast, that looks cute. Run away together, that's from my favorite uh, Throne of Eldraine as well, right? Dragon Mantle, enchanted creature. When Dragon Mantle enters the battlefield, draw a card. Enchanted creature has one mana. This creature gets plus one plus zero until end of turn. That's good. Not great, that's good. Flat Flash, Death Touch, that's pretty good. Ambush Viper, Soul's Fire, Thorn of the Black Rose. Sent in the spider again. Filigree Familia. Ooh, ooh, that looks great. Corpse Churn again. Marble Diamond. Gale Strike. Codex Shredder. Oh, that, that's an old card as well. Thirst for Knowledge is my boy Tesseret. Throw three cards, then discard two cards, unless you discard an artifact card. Patron of the Valiant. Hull Breacher, which is a 28 bucks card. Nice. 
3 mana, 3-2. Three, I know it's good, so let's see what it does. <laughs> Flash. If an opponent would draw a card, except the first one they draw in each of their draw steps, instead you create a treasure token. It's an artifact with sacrifice this artifact at one mana of any color. Holy shit! So basically, if the enemy... Wow. Okay, it, it's just in their draw steps. But if the enemy has any way of card draw during their draw step, other than the one that they do draw anyway, like the one card that you draw each turn is the exception. But anything above that gets negated and instead you get a treasure token, which is technically a mana or a usable mana. I know or I, I can see why this card is pretty valuable. I like it. Hamza, Guardian of Arashin. What are... Oh, oh. A Loxodon. Okay, so this is the trunk. These are the tusks. I... For for a few seconds, I could not understand what I'm looking for because I, it kind of looks like this is a head with shoulders here. But then I realized, okay, it's a Loxodon. It's an elephant. Okay. Uh, the spell costs one less to cast for each creature you control with a 1-1 counter on it. Creature spells you control, uh, you cast cost one less to cast for each creature. Okay, that's that's pretty cool. Keskit, the Flesh Sculptor. And we got Interpret the Signs. Scry 3, then reveal the top card of your library. Draw cards equal to that card's converted mana cost. Wow! That is actually pretty, pretty damn good. Because you scry 3, which means you can... You decide which card you draw. And so if you if you decide to get a six cost card, then you draw six cards. That's amazing. Not gonna lie, that is amazing. All right. Next pack. I'm gonna I'm gonna be a bit faster from now on, and I want to try and get like not necessarily exactly half, but. If we can get to, let's say, 10, that would be good. Then we would have 14 for the next episode. I think that would be pretty doable. Briarblade, Adapt, Raise the Alarm, Preordain, Impulsive Pilferer. When Impulsive Pilferer dies, create a treasure token. And Encore. Okay, that's that's okay. Finclay, Fugitives, Crow of Dark Tidings. Ah, beautiful art. I mean, I would shit myself if I see this in the wild, but beautiful card. Flying when Crow of Dark Tidings enters the battlefield or dies, mill two cards. Sure, if you need to mill, why not? Moss Diamond, Brazen Freebooter, Findhorn Elves, classic. It's the same as Lanowar Elves, it's just your classic one mana, one one, and added mana. Amazing card always sees play as far as I know. Forceful Denial, Cascade and Counter Target Spells. Ancestral Blade, Jaloom Tome, Eye Blight Assassin, Faced, Faith's Feathers. I still cannot say this the regular way. It is, it, that is not a possibility for me. Three Visits, Ebenezer Scrooge. <laughs> Search your library for a forest card, put that card onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. Sure. Why is it three visits? That doesn't make any sense, but okay. Dreamstone Hedron. Court, Court of Cunning. Court of Cunning enters the battlefield. You become the monarch. At the beginning of your upkeep, any numbers of target players each mill two cards. If you're the monarch, each of those players mills ten cards instead. That is bullshit. Bullshit. Like, it's amazingly... Amazingly strong, but that card is bullshit. That's one of those cards that would fit perfectly into my deck that really just mills the enemy's deck. But I would never, ever put that in because in my opinion, this is too bullshit. I love it though. <laughs> Colfinero, the last U. No idea how you should pronounce that, uh, but whatever. 3-7 for 6 mana. Reach and Vigilance. When Colfenor, the last you, enters another or another creature you control dies, 
Return up to one target creature card with lesser toughness from your graveyard to your hand. That's not bad, especially since it did 3-7. So basically, get your cards back. Radiant Sarah Archangel. Oh, she's been promoted to Archangel. Lovely for her. <laughs> 7 mana, 6-4. Flying, tap another untapped creature you control with flying. Radiant Sarah Archangel gains protection from the color of your choice until end of turn. Partner. Okay. And Inspiring War Roar. Put a 1-1 counter on each creature you control. Sure. Nice card. Okay, let's put away the bullshit card. Like I said, love it, but I would never use it. Absolutely not. Because I would just feel like I'm cheating. And I know the, the enemy can have can also have such bullshit cards. I, I know that. So saying I won't use it is technically me giving up advantages, or at least me putting myself on a disadvantage, but I just no, no. <laughs> that that's not nice. That is absolutely not nice. Alright. Yeah. What do we have here? Token is a copy. Can be can be used to represent a token that's a copy of a permanent. Of course, because it's copy. Blade Brand. Target player gains death touch until end of turn. Draw a card. Nice. Squad Captain. Universal Solvent. Wait, one mana. Seven. Sacrifice Universal Solvent. Destroy target permanent. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Sailor of Means. Dragon Egg. Liz Al Alana Bowmaster. Sure. Boarding Party. Angel of the Dawn, Court Street Denison, Staunch Throne Guard. Vigilance, sta when Staunch Throne Guard enters the battlefield, you become the monarch. Of course you do. So it's basically a, a game of nope, mine, nope, mine, nope, mine. It's an interesting concept. It, it sounds stupid. Gotta, let me just say, in, it sounds stupid, but I think in-game it's much more interesting. It's a Azure Fleet Admiral, Amorphous X, Null Caller, Brass Herald, Volcanic Torrent, Curl of Bounty again, Talis, Reverend Medium, Glacian, Power Stone Engineer, Pirates Cutlass, and the Prismatic Piper. So I didn't read the Court of Bounty again because we already got that one, it was the first rare we pulled. Meaning we all know by heart what this card does. Every one of you knows it, we don't have to go over it. <laughs> but if you don't know it, you can just jump back, pause the video, whatever. So we opened 8 packs now, which means I want to open those two as well. End it after 10 and then make another episode with the remaining 14. Yeah, that sounds that sounds about right. That sounds about doable. We got a golem. Strange looking one. Elvish vision, visionary. Elvish visionary. Briarblade adapt. Captain's call. Strategic planning. It's Jace Bellerin and Gideon Yura. Being like, no, you go for it. Okay, no, no, you go for it. You listen to me. <laughs> Rummaging goblin. Kite sail skirmisher. Ancestral blade. Molar Beast, Spectral Searchlight, that looks gorgeous. Gorgeous! Eye Blight Massacre, Charcoal Diamond, we Welding Sparks, Entourage of Trest, Vow of Light, or Vow of Light, sorry, Armorcraft Judge, Meteoric Mace, Rak R R Rakshasa, Rakshasa Debaser, Rakshasa Debaser, sure! Whatever, just throw stuff in there and be like, sure, that's a name. That's something you need to know. <laughs> six mana, six, six. Whenever Rakshasa Debaser attacks, put target creature card from defending player's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Sure you do. Of course you do. Dargo the Shipwrecker. With a... Okay, sure, no, okay, well, of course. That's, that's how you eat those. Numa, Joraga, Chieftain, and Aqueous Form. All right, what, what, whatever. Rakshasa Debaser. That that seems totally legend. 
Ah, magic is strange. I love it. I really need to to read some more of the novels. I've I've read quite a few back in the day. I would say oh man, quite a few. Uh, probably around six. So not that not that much. But they're most most of the time they are really really good, or at least enjoyable. Blade Brand. Squad Captain, Universal Solvent, Sailor of Means, Dragon Egg, Life Crafter's Gift, Soul's Fire, Sentinel Spider, Murder, Comet Tower, Ninth Bridge Patrol, Commander Sphere, at one manner of any color in your commander's color identity, Sacrifice Commander Sphere, draw a card. Sphere, not Spear, Sphere. I think I've heard somewhere that this card is also surprisingly valuable, like we're not talking 10 bucks or above, but I think one or two bucks for being a common. If I remember correctly, I could be totally wrong. Scab Goliath, Coastline Marauders, Vow of Torment, Explosion of Riches, Seraphic Greatsword. Two mana, equipped creature gets plus two plus two. Whenever a cre equipped creature attacks the player with the most life or tied for most life, create a 4-4 four, four white angel creature token with flying that's tapped and attacking that player. Holy shit. That's not bad. Kengi, Skywarden, it's Kengi. <laughs> Malcolm, Keen Eyed Navigator, sure. And ooh, Necrotic Hex, Holographic or Foil. Seven mana, each player sacrifices six creatures. You create six tap two two black zombie creature tokens. Of course, everyone sacrifices six creatures, sure. <laughs> I mean, you too, but can you play it if you have five or less? Like, each player sacrifices that amount of creatures. Can you play it if each player has less? I think you can. I'm pretty sure you can. Whatever. That was episode 1. For episode 2, we have 14 more packs. It's going to probably take the same time as those 10. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm the Renegade Cactus. Hope to see you next time. And I gotta run. Bye-bye.